That's right. Yep. So you get 17 minus 3 is a 14, and then you get 2n equals 14, and then what do we do? You divide by 2? Yes, and then 14 over 2 is a 7, yeah? So mm -hmm. that is the algebraic approach. Now for the graphical way, they've given us the, they've already drawn out the line 2n plus 3, this is a line for 2n plus 3, and now we want to see where it meets 17. So all you got to do is draw a horizontal line from 17, this way, right? You see that? Mm -hmm. See where it meets our curve or our line, and then you want to do it, pull it down. And there you go. Our answer is down here. The y value is 17. The x value is a 7. Okay? Okay. Hmm. So this one, they have not given us an equation. So what do we do? So again, a linear equation is going to be in this form. Y equals mx plus b, OK? Where mm -hmm. b is the y-intercept, and where m is the slope. Mm -hmm. So for part a, it says make a table of values. OK, we can do that. x and y. x represents the figure number. Y represents the number of tiles. So here we have three, four, and five, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we come up with the equation for the set of values? Um, I kind of forgot. So um, here, let me get some space here. To find an equation from a table of values, yeah, first find the slope. So m is rise over run, yeah? Mm -hmm. So again, rise is this, the difference in the y values, run is the difference in the x values. So you see, rise is going to be from 3 to 4, rise is a 1, yeah? Mm -hmm. Run is from 1 to 2, it's also going to be a 1. Or you can use this, this is what I'm doing, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, OK? OK. This is y2, this is x2, this is y1, this is x1. So subtract this from this, this from this, you get 1 over 1. Alternatively, there's so many ways to do this. You can also kind of make a rough sketch of this. So 1, 3 is here, right? 1, 3 is here, and then 2, 4 is here. Now, from you can from here, you just draw a triangle. And what's the rise here? From 3 to 4, the rise is a 1, right? And from mm -hmm. 1 to 2, the run is a 1 as well. So the slope is 1 over 1. The slope is a 1. So now uh, we have our equation, y equals 1x plus b. And then to find the b value, what you can do is you can plug in any of the points and solve for b. So I'm going to plug the first point. When the y value is 3, the x value is a 1. See, like that. OK. And then 1 times 1 is a 1, and then you want to subtract 1 on both sides, so b is 2. Therefore, our equation is y equals 1x plus 2, like that. OK. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Now, once we have the equation, that's the answer to part b. This was the answer to part a. Part c says create, oh, actually, uh, yeah, create an equation to determine the number of figures with the 22 tiles. Any ideas on how to do that one? You replace something with the 22? Yes, is the x value or the y value? Which one represents the number of tiles? Um, the y value. Exactly. So we're going to set y as 22. So that is equals to 1x plus 2, like this. OK. How do we solve this for x? Um. You subtract 2. Yeah, and that's it. So x is 20, yeah? Mm -hmm. So x is 20. So this is doing it um, algebraically. Part D wants us to do this graphically. So to do that, we have to first sketch um, this line, x plus 2. Do you remember how to sketch a linear line? Um. So first you start from the y-intercept, okay? 
you want to start at the y-intercept, which is a two, right? Mm -hmm. This is going to be one of our points. And then from here, you see the slope is one. Rise over run is one. So for every one unit, you go up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For every one unit, you go up. You got to go one unit to the right. OK. So from here, go one unit up, one unit up, And there you go. Those are the two points. And you just join them. And you can extend them indefinitely. Okay. Like that. And there you go. That's our line. And it wants us when the y value is 22. So 21, 22 is right there. So I'm just going to draw a line here. And I'm going to pull this down. And that's going to be our answer. When the y value is 22, what's the x value? Well, I know this is 10. So this thick line is going to be 20, which is what we had before doing it uh, algebraically as well. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yep. I'm going to try to one more of these. Um, hmm. So here it says, first, uh, write the table of values for the data. So if you notice the pattern, right, x and y, when x is 1, yeah, what's the mm -hmm. y value here? It looks like it's a 10. That's right between 0 and 20, so that has to be 10. OK? OK. At 2, it's, hmm, that's not a very good point. I think that's 15. So at 2, it's 15. At um, 3, it's 20. You see the pattern? It's going up by 5 mm -hmm. each time which is also the slope. The rate at which it increases is the slope, or we can find it out this way. So y equals mx plus b. To find the slope, you can pick any two points. I'm gonna pick from uh, one to two. What's the rise here from one to two? From one to two, the rise is 10 to 15. The rise is a five, yeah? Mm -hmm. What's the run from one to two? one so the slope is a five now once we know the slope how do we find the b value the y-intercept um you just plug in any of the points right oh okay and solve for b so i'm just going to plug the first one so the y value is 10 for the first point the x value is a one plus b so that means b is five our equation, therefore, is 5x plus 5. y equals 5x plus 5. OK? OK. And now we need to find out um, which week he had $60 in his bank account for part C. So is 60 the y value or the x value? Um. It's a. Uh... Y value? Yeah, exactly. You can look at the units here, right? Amounts in dollars, a week is just the week number. So $60 mm -hmm. means it's a Y value. It's a dependent variable. Time is always independent, so that's the Y value. 60 equals 5X plus 5. How do we solve this? You subtract 5. Right, so 55 equals 5X, and then what do we do? You divide by 5. Right, so X is going to be 11. So week number 11, he's going to have $60. I can also prove that by the graph. So 60, we just want to draw a horizontal line here and see where it touches the x value. So that looks like it's 11 right there. Mm -hmm. If the pattern continues, when will David's bank balance reach $100? So again, we can either do this graphically or algebraically. 100 is right here, yeah? I'm just going to pull that there, uh, horizontal, see where it touches our graph. So touches it right here. What week number is that between 18 and 20? 19. 19, exactly. So week number 19, he'll have 100 bucks. If the pattern continues, what will be his bank balance at the end of 20 weeks? Um. 
So it looks like it's going to be 105, you see? Mm -hmm. Or we can plug it in here. So that's when the um, x value is 20. y equals 5 times 20 plus 5, 100 plus 5, and that is 105. After 20 weeks, you'll have 105. Or we can also see that from the graph. At 20, we do this. And that point is right in the middle of 100 and 110. So that's going to be 105. Mm -hmm. Hmm, no questions there. So let's look at this one. Um, during a sale, um, two types of books, hardcover and paperbacks. These ones cost $1.50, these ones cost 0.85. Write an algebraic expression that represents the total income from all the used books that were sold during the sale. Um. Any ideas? Do you like, is it like y equals um, 1.50x? Yeah, so that's for the hardcover books. And now we can say it's 0 0.085, yeah? Any other letter, like z or a or whatever. OK. So Y here represents the total income combined. X mm -hmm. is the number of hardcover books, or maybe we can just do H and P. So 1.50H and then 0.85P. So H is the hardcover books and P is the paperbacks, okay? Okay. Part B, evaluate your expression if eight hardcover books were sold and 15 paperbacks. Well, that's easy, which is gonna replace our H and our P yeah. with eight and 15 respectively like that. Mm -hmm. This one, we have to plug it in the calculator. 1.5 times 8 plus 0 0.85 times 15. That's $24.75. And you're done. OK. Um, this one looks like it's just a plug and chug. So it says evaluate this expression when these are the values. Any ideas on how to do this? I mean, it's very simple. You just plug where you see them. So M is five, so five times five minus nine divided by four, like that. Mm -hmm. Now what? So you just do five times five, 25, and then you subtract nine. Exactly, so 25 minus nine divided by four. What is 25 minus nine? 16. Yes, and then 16 divided by four, which is a four, which is your final answer. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. That one was pretty simple. Um, it's difficult when you have to make the thingy yourself, the equation. All right, how much are dimes worth? How much are nickels worth? Um, a dime is 10 and a nickel is five? Yes. 
So let's make an expression for this. So y is the total value, yeah? Mm -hmm. We have 0 0.05 for the nickels plus 0 0.10 for the dimes and plus 0 0.25 for the quarters, like that. Mm -hmm. And then for part B, you just want to plug, replace these with how many there are. So nickels, there's 23 nickels, 0 0.05 times 23 plus 0 0.10 times uh, 21 dimes and 0 0.25 times 25 quarters, right? Mm -hmm. 0.05 times 23 plus 0 0.1 times 21 plus 0 0.25 times 25. So all together, you have $9.50, which is not much. There's almost 75 coins. A test has six questions worth three marks each and 16 questions worth two marks each. Write an algebraic expression for each situation. The number of marks that Amy earns from three mark questions if she gets T of them right. So y equals, yeah, she gets three marks for each correct question and she got three T of them right. There we go. That's all. Oh, okay. Very similar to part B. Now it's two more questions and she gets a W of them right. So two times W? Yeah, exactly. Part C, the total number of marks she can earn. So we know she can either get three marks from the T correct ones or two marks from the W correct ones. So you just combine them, just add them up. Three T plus two W for part C. For part D, now we know what exactly T is, what W is, so we just plug that in there. So three times five plus two times 13, that's 15 plus 26, so she got 41 marks. Okay, mm -hmm. out of a total of, what is this, 36, 50, 54. Total she could have gotten is 54. She got 41. Mm -hmm. Start in this area question, or it's actually it's parameter. Write an algebraic expression for the perimeter of the rectangle. So you can say P, yeah? What's mm -hmm. the perimeter of a rectangle? Um. You just add all the sides. Right, so it's gonna be L plus W plus L plus W, yeah? Mm -hmm. There's L here, there's, uh, sorry, there's W there, there's L down here. So the parameter expression is gonna be 2L plus 2W. That's uh -huh. the answer to part A. Part B, what's the area of this rectangle? L times W? Yeah, exactly. So the area is L times W. So for part C, we just got to plug in L and W's in both of those equations. So the perimeter is going to be 2 times 11.2 plus 2 times 8.4. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's 22.4 plus 16.8 point two, um, 39.2. What's the units? Um. Meters squared? Nope. For perimeter. Perimeter is a unit of length. So just meters. Oh, okay. For the area, you just do length times width. So 11.2 times 8.4, right? Mm -hmm. So 
11.2 times 8.4, the answer there is 94.08 was the unit of area. Um, M square? Yeah, exactly, meters squared. If I were to cut this, or if I were to draw a straight line here, like this, would this mm -hmm. affect, like I'm basically trying to create a, like a wall. Would this affect the area at all? The area of this entire rectangle? Mm -hmm. It would affect it? Yes. No, it would not. Because area is length times W. So the total length and the total width remains unchanged. And I can draw 20 of these. The total area will not change. But now the perimeter would be because you need more walls, right? You need more lengths of rope or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the perimeter is going to change, but the area is going to stay the same. Like if you were to okay. calculate this each individual area and add them up, you'll still get the same thing as before. The area is unchanged. Create a table of values is the first question. You can kind of do this actually if you want to find, I don't know if it's going to be accurate. That's pretty good. See, if you, if you work your way backwards, you already know what the y intercept is. Mm -hmm. so y intercept is wherever the uh, graph touches the y axis. In this case, the y axis is the number of golf carts. Part A is telling us to create a table of values. So x, y, and what do we know? One is, what's between six and 12? What is this y value here? Um, it's nine. Yep, and two, it looks like it's 15, right? Mm -hmm. At three, that is 21, and at uh, four, that is 27. What's the slope? Um. It's three? Nope. That's the y-intercept, not the slope. The slope is rise over run. So you don't got to do this over this. Right? Mm -hmm. From 9 to 15, what's the rise? Um, it's 6. Yeah, exactly. Slope is rise over run. From 9 to 15, the rise is 6. And from 1 to 2, what's the run? Um, just 1. Just 1. So you see the slope is 6. So our equation is going to be mx plus b. We know the m is the slope, so y equals 6x. And this one, I just dragged it backwards a bit to see what the y-intercept is. See, the y-intercept is 3. Mm -hmm. So 6x plus 3, like that. Okay. Okay. That is our equation. And write an equation to determine when 51 golf carts were produced. So is that the x value or the y value? And then just look at the units on the graph. They want us to, for part C, they want to know when 51 golf carts were produced. Is golf carts the Y value or the X value? The Y value? Yeah, exactly. So we got to solve for X when Y is 51 like this. How do you solve this equation? You subtract three and then divide by six. Exactly, so 48 over six equals eight. X is gonna be eight. So that's the answer, eight. And we can also verify that. Um, might be a little bit difficult though. Actually, no, because 51 is right in the middle of 48 and 54, right there. And what's the X value there? Yeah, it is eight. There we go. So you can always double check on the graph. Mm -hmm. So 
So here they have not given us a graph or anything. They've just given us some marbles. What are these? Doesn't matter. So let's first create a table of values. So X and Y. And again, X is the figure number. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Y is the number of tiles here. 8, 11, um, 12 plus 3, 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 16 plus 3, 19. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you see the pattern is going up by four each time. Uh -huh. So that is your slope. Slope is four. Now to find your y-intercept, you can work backwards. If x were to be zero, what's the y value? Um, it would be seven. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. That is your y-intercept. Okay. Y-intercept is always when the x value is zero. Okay. On the y-intercept, that's when it touches the y-axis. At that instant, the x value is zero. So you can work backwards mm -hmm. as well, or you can just plug it back into the equation. You'll get the same answer. So the equation here is y equals. So this is the answer to part B, 4x plus 7. OK. Part C, create an equation to determine the number uh, of the figure that has 63 counters. So is the x value 63 or the y value 63? Um, the y value? Yeah, exactly. So 63 equals 4x plus 7. You want to subtract 7 from both sides, yeah? So that is 56 equals 4x. And then divide both sides by this. x is going to be um, 14. Mm -hmm. um, doing this by graph is much harder because we need to go all the way to the y value of 63. Hmm. I guess we can say each line is 20, but it's not going to be very precise. So our equation is 4x plus 7. Um, so what is the, I'm going to say each line is 3. So this is 30, this is 60, 63 is right here. And our y-intercept is 7. Yeah, it's not going to be very precise because where exactly is 7 here? It's going to be underneath the midpoint of 7.5, right? Mm -hmm. But this won't be very accurate because 63 is a big number. I'm going to say a 7 is right there. And the slope is 4. So for every 4 units, you move up, right? So you move up, you're going to get to 11. You've got to go one unit to the right, like that. Mm -hmm. And then you just connect them. OK. Something like this. And now for 63, there's the 63. What is the approximate x value here? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, yeah. This is an approximate solution because that's not a 7 and that's not an 11. That's probably like 6.8. It's probably like, I don't know, a little bit higher than 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 63 is a huge number. That's why this is a little bit difficult to do graphically. But if this number was like 20 or something, we could have done it precisely, OK? Mm -hmm. But the actual answer is 14, not 15. This is just an approximate solution. Let's look at this one. So she has a balance of this. She makes a deposit of 1250 each week. Write an algebraic expression that represents the amount of money after n weeks. Um. It's just like y equals. 182.73 plus 12.50 x. Yeah. Well, it's going to be n in this case. 
Okay. It says N here, right? So that's the answer to part A. Part B, it says, uh, how much will she have in her account after eight weeks? You replace eight with N. Yes. So Y equals 187.73 plus 1250 times eight, yeah? Mm -hmm. This is a calculator plug and chug. So 187.73 plus 1250 times eight, and that is $287.73. She got rich after eight weeks. Again, these are going to be mostly word problems. Um, so you got to read between the lines to get the equation. Um, this guy opened a bank account. He deposited the same amount of money each week for two weeks. Then he used his bank card to buy a gift for 14. His new bank balance was 107. How much did he deposit each week? So what are they asking? They're asking for us for the deposit each week. Let's say that is X. Let's X be the deposit, yeah? Mm -hmm. That he put. So at the end of week one, he has X dollars. At the end of week two, how much does he have? Two X, right? Mm -hmm. So at the, after two weeks, he had two X. And then he bought a gift card for $14, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he had a bank balance of 107. And there you go. That's the equation to solve. Okay. So here you can add a 14 on both sides. So 2x equals 121. And then you can divide by two. So he put in $60.50 for two weeks. Mm -hmm. How do they even do this? Um, I guess they're cheating because they're using like a graphical calculator. Doing this by hand is not gonna be precise at all. Look at the number, mm -hmm. you have to go all the way to 100 and something. And that means your scale would probably be like each, each this is 10 units, right? Mm -hmm. Scale is way too small for it to be a precise answer. I can buy a used guitar and an amplifier for 425. Instead of buying new ones, she can borrow a lawnmower, but she still needs about $100 for gas. She charges $15 per lawn. Draw a graph to show the situation. Put the number of lawns on the X and the amount she will earn on the Y. Any ideas on what the values could potentially be? Um, well, if she needs like um, four to twenty five dollars. Yes, yeah, so for see every lawn she mows, she gets fifteen dollars, right? So one fifteen, mm -hmm. two thirty, yeah, three forty five. So the amount she earns is what in terms of x. She earns fifteen dollars for each lawn, yeah, fifteen x. Mm -hmm. But then this is her total earnings. She also got to pay for gas, so fifteen x minus one hundred that's gonna come out of her pocket, right? Minus mm -hmm. 100. Now, what is this equals to? What do we solve for? 
So we know she needs to save up 425, right? Mm -hmm. So you have 425 right here as the Y value. Okay. You understand that? Mm -hmm. 15X is her total earnings. $100 for the gas, and then she needs to save up 425. How do we solve this equation for X? Um, you add 100 and then right. you divide by 15. All right, so 15x equals 525. 525 divided by 15 is 35. So x equals 35. What does that mean? Um, what does x represent in this case? The amount of lawns. Yeah, exactly. So she needs to mow 35 lawns to be able to afford this or to meet her goals. Mm -hmm. Most of these are kind of easy-ish. Let's see. Now that's also easy. Let's try this one. And then we will do some more complicated equations. Three full bags of sand all have the same mass. When 4.5 gram of sand is removed from the third bag, the total mass of the three bags is 233.7. What is the mass of each bag of full sand? So again, whatever they're asking you, it's always going to be X. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you see there's, there's initially there was X, X, and X. And from the third X, we took away 4.5 grams. Mm -hmm. And when we added all of these, we got 233.7. Mm -hmm. So that is 3x minus 4.5 equals 233.7, like that. OK. That made sense? Mm -hmm. x, x, x. And then from this, we took away this. And then from here, you just add 4.5 on both sides. And then you divide by three. So each bag initially had a weight of 79.4 grams. Mm -hmm. What about this one? How do you solve x plus negative 4 equals 6? Um, you Add four? Yes, that's right. So x equals six plus four, x is 10. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what we're actually doing is this. We're subtracting negative four from both sides. You have a plus negative four equals six on both sides, yeah? Mm -hmm. This is a number, this is a sign. So the opposite of that would be minus. So you got to subtract negative four on both sides. 6 minus negative 4, and a double negative makes a positive. Mm -hmm. So 10 is the answer. OK. Here, give me a sec. Let me find you some. Yeah, something like this. We're gonna take it to the next level. Well, the first one's pretty simple, but this, again, the question is solve for x. You 
you subtract three. Right. And then? Um. You divide. By what? Um. By one over two. Yes, that's right. X equals two divided by one over two, right? Two divided by one over two. Or what you can do is look at this. What's one over two times X? Multiply the numerator with the numerator, the denominator with the invisible one in the denominator. That is just X over two. You see one over two X is the same thing as X over two. So here you're gonna multiply by two on both sides. X is four. Same thing here. You can also divide both sides by one and a half. So that's going to be, um, or one half. That's going to be two times two over one. Whenever there's a division, flip it, right? So four over mm -hmm. one, which is a four. Okay. This one. Um. You add three? No. Not in this case. So again, look at this. Um, this is in a bracket, right? See, mm -hmm. we're going to work this way. This is in a bracket. You want to do that oh. at the end. This is being multiplied with the bracket. So you want to do the negative two part first. You want to get rid of the negative two. Currently, it's being multiplied. So you divide negative yes. two? Yes, you divide negative two on both sides. What is negative four over negative two? Um, negative four divided by negative two. Does it become a positive two? Yeah, it does. Double negatives cancel out. So x minus three equals two. So x add three on both sides, x is five. Okay. Same idea here. Do we get rid of two over five or one over four first? One over four? Yeah, how do we get rid of one over four? You divide? Yes. What's a zero over one over four? Um, zero divided by one over four. It's just zero? Yes, a zero over anything is a zero, zero times anything is a zero. And then here you wanna subtract two fifths from both sides. See, the answer is negative two over five. Okay. And this one we have X's on both sides of the equation. Do you move like the X's on the other side? Mm -hmm. So you group up the like terms. So you wanna put the X's on the same side. So I'm gonna move the nine X to this side. It's gonna become a minus nine X. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna bring the negative 10 to the other side. What does it become? Negative 10 plus two. Two plus 10. Oh. It's being subtracted, right? It's being subtracted. So you wanna add 10 on both sides. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you add 10, this cancels out. So adding 10. So we get 9, 11x minus 9x is 2x. This is 12. And then from here, simple, just divide by 2. x is 6. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one's not fun. Same idea here, same exact idea as the question before, except the difference is we have fractions. Well, 
what do we um, do first? You can you, move the two over three. Uh, no, no, leave the two over three here. You see, this is negative. We're gonna move mm -hmm. this to the other side. So one and three over four is seven over four X, right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna add this because well, it's minus here. When you take it to the other side, it's gonna become like plus. Okay. Now, now we're gonna move the two to the other side. It's being added on the other side. It's gonna become a minus like that. Okay. okay. Um, now what? If you can find a um, common denominator across the board, all the denominators cancel out. So what's a common denominator between three, four, and five? Um. It's 60. Just okay. multiply them together. Just multiply them together. If you want. And you want to check if half of that works. 30 does not work for 4, so it's not 30. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't want to do that, we can just do this two things at a time. But that's going to be the most efficient. If you can find a common denominator across mm -hmm. the board, that's going to give all the denominators will cancel out. So this one, we have to times it by 20. This one by 60. This one by 15. Okay, and this one by 12, like that. Mm -hmm. So we get 40 over 60 minus 120 over 60 is equals to 105x over 60 plus 48x over 60, like that. Mm -hmm. Now, basically, all the denominators cancel out because they are the same. Uh-huh. So you get 40 minus 120 is negative 80 equals um, 148 plus 5 is 153x. So therefore, x is minus 80 over 153. And you're done. OK. Cool? Mm -hmm. Was that fun? Kind of. Now here, this one, we have triple X's. Again, it's the same idea. Um, but here, maybe you're going to have to open the brackets and put the X's on same sides. Um, to open the brackets, do you just take like the number on the outside and then multiply? Yes. Both. Yeah, both. Both. So what's negative three times x? Negative three x. What's negative three times one? Negative three. Yeah, minus two equals four x minus. When you open this, it becomes five x. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an x term. Um, fifteen. Plus fifteen, right? Mm hmm. Here we can clean it up a little bit before we move things around. So this becomes minus 3x. What's minus 3 minus 2? Um, minus 5. Right. Minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5. That is equals to 4x minus 5x is negative x plus 15. You see like that? Mm -hmm. So now we just put the x's on the same side, the numbers on the same side. So I'm going to move the negative 3x on the other side. It's going to become a plus 3x. I'm going to bring the plus 15 on the other side. It's going to become a minus 15, like that. Mm -hmm. Negative x plus 3x, what is that? Um, Mm 
negative x plus 3x. Mm, 2x? Yes. What about negative 5 minus 15? Negative 20. Yes, negative 20 equals 2x. So negative 20 over 2 is negative 10, and that's the answer. OK. OK, yeah, sometimes you'll get some things like these. So just clean it up by opening the bracket, and it's not that bad. Mm, this one's annoying as well. What do you think we do first here? Um. You open the brackets? Uh, there is no brackets to open. I mean, uh, it's not being multiplied by anything. All right, if you open the brackets, you get the exact same thing as, as it is right now. Um, the first thing to do, again, when you have a fraction, right? And then there's like four different terms. Um, I mean, we can clean up the four and the six. Let me move the six to this side. It's going to become a plus six. Yeah? Mm -hmm plus six, so we only have three terms to deal with. So four plus six, these are like terms. That's a 10, which has an invisible denominator of one. And on the other side, we have x minus six over two. Like that, step one, okay? Step mm -hmm. two is all, the goal is to always kill the denominator. So we need to find the common denominator between three, one, and two, and that will allow us to completely ignore the denominator. Um, it's six. It's six. So we need to multiply this by a two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Multiply this by a six and multiply this by a three. Like that. Mm -hmm. now you see we have six in the denominator for all three terms. We can just cross them out. And now it's no longer a fraction. Okay. Then we have two times four plus x. So just open the bracket. It's called foiling. Two times four is eight. And then two times x is two x plus 60 equals three times x is three x minus 18. Now what? Um, you can move them around. Yeah. So actually, you can clean it up a bit. 2x plus 68, and then 3x minus 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move the 2x to the other side. So 3x minus 2x. I'm going to move the minus 18 to this side. What does it become if I move the minus 18 to the left? Um, 68 plus 18. Right, 68 plus 18. What's 68 plus 18? Here, this is how you do it. 68 plus 20 is 88. Yeah. And then 18 is 2 less, so you subtract 2. It's 86. OK. 3x minus 2x is what? Um, 5x? No, 3x minus 2x. Oh. It's just an x. 1x? Yeah. Okay. There we go. And this is the answer, OK? OK. This look a little bit difficult, but it's, it's not that bad. As long as uh, you can take the common denominators, you can cancel them out. Let's try a couple of these. It says um, solve for y in terms of x. So this is basically uh, telling you to find out what y is equals to. And this will also allow us to see what the slope and the y-intercept is. So how do we solve this equation for y? Basically, we only want y on one side, everything else on the other side. You divide by eight? Uh, no. If you divide by eight, notice you can't cancel them out because there's a minus. There's two different terms. Oh. Step one, let's make the y positive. I'm going to throw the 4y to the other side, and I'm going to subtract 12 like that. OK. And now the goal is to solve for y. So we're going to divide by 4 on each side, OK? Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you can do that individually. So 8x over 4 minus 12 over 4. 
What's 8x over 4? Um, 8x over 4 is just 8 over 4, 2, and the x stays where it is. It's 2x. Oh, okay. 8x over 4 is 2x. And then minus 12 over 4, that's a 3. So there we go. The slope is 2. The y-intercept is minus 3. Let's try doing a dicey one here. Same idea, solve for y. Um, so subtract yeah. x over four on both sides, step number one. Like that. Now, how do we get rid of this eight in the bottom in the denominator? Um, can you multiply? Yes, you multiply eight on both sides. So y is equal. So again, when you multiply them, you're multiplying with both of those terms. So we have eight times negative x over four plus eight times two. Mm -hmm. So that's negative 8x over 4. That's negative 2x plus 16. And there we go. We solve for y. The slope is minus 2. The y-intercept is plus 16. OK. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these ones are a little bit difficult. You won't see this level just yet, but it's, it's good practice. You might. I don't know, actually. You, you may, right? Because you have mm -hmm. done fractions. So you will definitely see some equations with fractions on them. Anyways, uh, let's call it a day for today. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Bye.